Hey guys, in this series, Mariano5 and myself are going to discuss 10 very common leagues we've spotted over the thousands of combined hours we've played at the live cash games, along with what we can do to avoid them and immediately increase our win rate. Yeah, that's right. And we're also excited to announce that we have an entire Razor Edge course coming out in early 2019, which is focused solely on crushing the live games. In the course, we'll be expanding on all the concepts in the series, plus everything else you'll need to be successful at the live felt. But for now, let's get into the leagues. Alright, so here we have leak number 9, raising too small on wet boards. So this is when we are facing a bet on the flop or the turn, and the board's very dynamic, there's a lot of draws present, and we go to make the raise with our strong value hand, or maybe our semi-bluff, but we make it way too small, and our opponent gets an amazing price, and it makes it very easy for them to play against us. So definitely something we want to be avoiding. So for starters, when I'm talking about our range, we want to be thinking about both bluffs and value hands and be using the correct sizings with both parts of our range. What often happens is that a player will bet small on the flop or the turn in comparison to the size of the pot. So maybe they bet something like a fifth pot and we only look at the bet size. We forget to realize how big the pot was before and then maybe we make it something like 3x their sizing but we fail to realize that once it gets back to them, we end up giving them amazing odds to draw. So for example, maybe they have something like 5 or 6 to 1 odds. So obviously in that case, on these web boards, when there's so many draws present, we want to stay away from this, otherwise it's very easy for our opponent to play correctly against us. Obviously there's the fact that when we're deep stacked, they're going to have amazing implied odds as well, so you always need to take this into consideration. And you always need to account for the number of players in. So the more players that are in, the more possible draws that could be out there, so we want to go even bigger. There's also the fact that weak players are just going to overpay for their draws anyways, so it doesn't really matter. They'll also overplay with their medium strength value hands as well, so when we have a strong value hand ourselves, we really want to punish these players by making large raise sizings get max value. Also, if we make tiny raise sizings, we're not going to have any fold equity with our semi-bluffs, so in this case, we're actually just making it more expensive for ourselves to draw. If you think you have no fold equity, then just call. And if you think you do have some fold equity, make sure you make it a big enough sizing where your opponents can actually fold some weak draws or some marginal value hands. Alright, so let's have a quick look at a couple of example hands now. 1-3 game, pocket 4 is in late position. So raising a call, a couple calls, easy call for us in position here with the fours. This hand obviously has amazing implied odds, especially in a softer lineup. You're going to get paid off a ton when you do hit a set. So we definitely need to see a flop here. And we go five way. We do in fact flop bottom set, so great outcome. The board is fairly wet. And now the loose aggressive player comes in for the one quarter pot C bet. So really small sizing, especially on a board like this. Loose pass the player calls, so it's on us. We definitely want to go for a raise here. Um, we can start building the pot. We can get value from a ton of worse hands. Lots of 10x, 9x. There's going to be tons of draws present as well. So we definitely want to start building the pot. There's going to be a lot of bad turns as well that are going to kill the action, so we really want to try to get as much money in as we can right away. So we do go ahead and raise, but we only make it 60 here. We forgot to account that the pot was already 80 almost when he bet, and instead we just looked at his 20 sizing and made it 3x. So the problem here is that once it gets back to him, he's getting almost 4.5 to 1 immediate odds. We're also pretty deep stack with him as well, and if he calls, the loose pass, the player is going to be getting even better odds. So we're really allowing them to draw with a really good price here. They can even draw with hands like gut shots, over cards with backdoor flush draws, obviously any spade draws, and with their value hands, we're just making it way too cheap for them. So in this spot, I'd much prefer to make it something like 90 to 110, because realistically, the difference between them calling, say, 60 and 100 or so, it's not going to be much. They're going to be continuing with pretty much the same range. And there's also the fact that many players, when they see the bigger raise sizings, they feel like with their draws, they either should just shove or fold. So a lot of times, players will just rip it in with a spade draw, versus the bigger sizing, whereas versus the smaller sizing, they'll just make the call and try to draw to it cheaply. 
So yeah, here just make it something like 90 to 110, going to be totally fine. Start building the pot right away and punish these weaker players with bigger sizings with your strong value hands. Next hand, we have a 2-5 game now. ABC Reg comes in for the 4x from the cutoff. Random player in the small blind calls, so great hand to defend with here, which we do, and pretty good flop for us with the two overs and a flush draw, as well as some backdoor straight draws. Random player checks, and we check it over to the ABC Reg. Now he comes out betting, small sizing, only a third pot, so we can definitely assume his range is pretty weak here. If he had a strong overpair or a strong draw himself we can assume he's going to be betting something like two-thirds pot or so so he could definitely just be betting a lot of hands here maybe some weak ace highs just over cards maybe some 7x 8x 4x now the random player calls he can definitely have a fairly wide range as well we'd expect him to be check raising with any two pair type hands sets probably a lot of draws as well on this type of board so it's on us now we definitely are not going to fold we could consider calling here, but I much prefer to go for the check raise here. Sensing weakness, we can definitely generate some fold equity, and obviously we have a ton of equity ourselves with the two overs and the flush draw. And then obviously any six, any nine, and any jack give us the additional gut shot on the turn, so tons of equity. So we do go for the check raise, but we only make it 50 here, so really small. Now, as you can see, the ABC reg is getting 5-1 to one odds, and he's in position, so... He can float with a ton of hands here, any pair, a lot of ace highs, lots of hands with overs and backdoor flush draws, any gut shot. So really, we're just making it more expensive for ourselves to draw here because I really don't see a ton of fold equity. Maybe he folds, but the random player is going to call very often. So when you do go for the check raise, you want to make it big enough so that you do have additional fold equity. I'd much rather make it something like, say, 90 or 110 here, similar to the pocket fours hand. In that case, we're definitely going to be creating way more fold equity, taking it down way more often. So make sure you size it up. All right, so looking to a solution now. The main thing is to practice counting the pot when considering what raise sizing you want to be using. So you always want to be aware of how big the pot was before he bet. The wetter the board is, the bigger we go. So obviously on extremely wet boards, there's going to be a ton of bad turns and rivers and we really just want to put as much money into the pot on the early streets as possible with our really strong value hands. Hopefully even getting it all in, that's totally fine. So for example, we have 7-8 suited on Jack-9-10 and there's two to a flush out there. Now in this case, there's obviously going to be a ton of bad turns, any king, any queen, any eight obviously any flush card so we really want to pile the money in there as fast as possible here try to eliminate as many draws as possible with a big raise sizing now if we compare that to a board like king nine three and there's two to a, two to a flush and we have a set of threes this board is still somewhat wet but not really as wet as the one above so we wouldn't have to go as big here there's also the fact that if the board pairs we're almost guaranteed to win the hand so we don't have to worry about that. So in this case, again, don't have to go as big. You can see the difference between these two boards. The more players that are in, the bigger we want to go in general. Again, there's going to be more draws possible when there's lots of players out. There's also the fact that if one player calls, it can start a chain reaction. So by the time it gets to the second or third caller, he's getting an amazing price if you make it too small. With very deep stacks, you also want to go bigger. So obviously you want to be thinking about implied odds, make sure you charge them the appropriate price on the early streets. Versus weak and call happy players, we definitely want to go as big as we can with our value hands. So we can have a look at an example here. Let's say we have $500 in our effective stack and we're on the flop. We face a $35 bet into a $90 pot. Now, Scenario 1, we make it $90 only, and we assume the board is wet here. So our opponent calls, and now we're facing a turn spot where the pot is 270, and we have 410 in our stack. So as you can see, it's a pretty awkward stack size. We could shove the turn for like 1.5x the pot, which can be fine in certain scenarios, but if we actually change our bet sizing on the flop, and instead we make it 140, 
And realistically, the difference in his calling range between 90 and 140 against a weak player is not going to be huge. He's still going to be continuing with a very similar range. In that case, the pot's going to be 370 on the turn, and our stack size is going to be 360, so we have a very nice pot size shove on safe turns. So the main idea here is that we want to make it a two-street game, if possible, on these wet boards. We want to try to get the money in by the turn, if possible. When we're out of position, we also want to make our sizings bigger because it's going to be tougher to play the hand when we're out of position. Our opponent's going to be able to correctly call our raises when he's in position more often, so we don't mind just charging him the max here and creating that little extra fold equity as well just to end the hand right away when we have, say, a semi-bluff. It's totally fine. A good trick that we can use when thinking about raise sizing is to raise to about the size of the pot when we're coming up against a small bet, say for example one-fifth pot to half pot and there's multiple opponents in there. So as you saw in the pocket fours example, if we made it something like 110 or so, by the time it gets back to the original razor, he's going to be making, so he's going to be getting about 2.5 to 1 or so. So it's a good trick that you can use. It's different than a pot size bet, which you see in PLO. In this case, I'm just talking about you just raise to the actual size of the pot once the bet gets to you. Now, as somewhat of a general guideline when we're thinking about what type of odds we want to be giving them, obviously you can never be concrete. There's going to be so many different factors at play. But something good to aim for would be to not give them more than around 2.5 to 1 immediate odds on the flop on very wet boards. So for example, we face a $25 bet into a $100 pot. In the first case, we just make it 3x. We forget to account for the pot size. Now it gets back to our opponent, and he's getting 4 to 1 immediate odds now. He only has to call 50 into a pot of 200 now. So obviously not, not a great spot for us on a really wet board. And if there's someone behind him, he's going to be getting even better odds. Second scenario, we raise to the size of the pot. So we raise to 125. Now it gets back to him. He's getting 2.5 to 1 odds. So he has to call 100 into, into 250. So it's just going to be a better sizing to use that. As you can see, we use that little trick of making it the size of the pot there. And then on the turn, we can afford to give them a little bit better odds because there's only one card to go. But we still don't want to give them somewhere around, say, 2.5 to 3 to 1 odds on the turn. All right, guys, so that was it for leak number 9. Uh, hopefully this can help you out. And just make sure that you make your raise sizings really big on these web boards and get the money in there, get the max value. This has been Mariana5 for Razor Edge.